of the Magic Fiddle. Another story from the Brothers Grimm. There was once a rich miser, and he had a servant who served him truly and well. The servant was the first one up in the morning and the last one to bed at night. If there were anything to be done, he was ever ready to do it, and no matter how hard he had to work, he was always merry and happy. After a servant had worked a whole year, he asked the miser for his wages, but the miser said, wait one year longer and then I will pay you. For he thought to himself, I shall save by doing this and the fellow is not so likely to run away. The servant did not fancy this plan, but being a happy fellow, he said nothing and worked for the miser another year. At the end of the second year, the miser again put him off and said he would pay him at the end of the third year. When the end of the third year came, the servant said, Master, I have served you truly and well for three years. Pay me my wages, for I wish to go away and look about the world. The miser answered, Yes, my man, you have served me well, and you shall have your pay. Then he put his hand into his pocket and drew out three pennies. When he had placed these one by one in the servant's hand, the old miser said, There, you have one penny for every year, and that is more than you would get from most masters. The good servant, who knew little about the worth of money, put the three pennies into his pocket and started off to see the world. He had gone only a short way when a little old man came out of the bushes beside the road and cried, Where are you going, my merry fellow? You sing as if there were not a care in the world. Why should I be sad, answered the servant, when I have three years' wages in my pocket? And pray how much is that, asked the old man. How much? Why, three good pennies, to be sure, said the servant. Listen, said the little old man, I am very poor and I cannot work any more. Give me your three pennies, for you are strong and can easily earn your bread. Now the servant had a good heart, and he was sorry for the poor little man. So he gave him his three pennies, and he said, My friend, you need them more than I do. Take them, I shall not miss them. Then the little man said, I see what a good heart you have, and in turn I will give you three wishes, one for each penny, and I will give you a good word besides. Ah, said the servant, you are a fairy, I see. Very well then. First, I wish for a gun which will always hit what I aim at. Second, I wish for a fiddle which will make everyone dance when I play. Third, I wish that no one shall be able to refuse whatever I ask. You shall have all three wishes, said the little old man, and diving into the bushes he came out with a long gun and a beautiful red fiddle. These he gave to the servant and said, one word and I will go. Your master has cheated you. Your three years' work was worth a hundred times three pennies. Then the servant was angry and turned back to ask his master for the rest of his money. He had not gone far when he came upon the old miser looking at a bird in the bushes. Ah, said the miser, what a fine meal that bird would make if I only had him. If that is all, said the servant, the bird shall soon come down. He took aim and down fell the bird into some thorn bushes. As soon as the miser had crept in among the thorns to pick up the bird, the servant took his fiddle and started to play. At once the old miser's legs began to shake, keeping time to the music, and in spite of all he could do, he had to spring up among the thorns and begin to dance. The longer the servant played, the faster the miser danced. The thorns tore his shabby coat, combed his long beard, and scratched him all over. Alas, alas, he cried, put down your fiddle and stop playing or I shall be torn to pieces. But the servant let the old man dance a while longer, for he thought, you have cheated many men in your time beside me, and the thorn shall not spare you now. So he played on and on, and the miser had to jump higher and higher until his coat hung in rags about him. Do stop, cried the miser. I will give you anything you like if you will only stop. Take this bag, it is full of gold. Oh well, if you are so free with your money, said the servant, I am quite ready to stop my music, 
but I must praise your dancing. It's equal I have never seen before. Then he took the bag and went on his way. The miser stood in his rags and looked after the servant until he was out of sight. Then he cried with all his might, You wicked fiddler, I will get even with you yet. I will chase you till the soles of your shoes drop off. Then the miser ran to the judge in the nearest town. Just look here, Mr. Judge, he said. See what has been done to me on the high road by a wicked servant. The sight of me should melt a heart of stone, my clothes and my body torn and my bag of gold taken away. Oh dear, oh dear, you must put the wretch in prison. Then the judge said, how did it happen? Did the man use a sword? Oh no, cried the miser. He had no sword, but he had a long gun and a fiddle was hung around his neck. The man can be easily found. So the judge sent out men after the faithful servant who had been walking slowly along. They soon came up to him and found the bag of gold in his pocket. When the servant came before the judge, he said, I did not lay my hand on the miser, nor did I take his money away. He gave it to me of his own free will, if I would only stop playing, for he said that he could not stand my music. What next? cried the miser. His lies are as thick as the flies on the wall. And the judge who could not believe the servant said, you tell a very poor story. No man ever gave a bag of gold for such a thing as that. And he ordered the servant to be hung to the gallows for robbing a man on the king's highway. As the servant was being led to the gallows, the miser cried after him, you dog of a fiddler, it is good enough for you. The servant climbed the ladder to the gallows with the rope around his neck. Just before he got to the top, he turned and said to the judge, let me do one thing before I die. So long as you ask not for your life, said the judge, I will grant your wish. All I want, said the servant, is to play my fiddle once more before I die. Then the miser gave a loud cry, don't do it, Mr. Judge, don't let him do it. But the judge said, why should I refuse him? He may do it, and that is the end of it. The judge could not have refused this last wish, even if he had wanted to, because of the fairy's gift to the servant. Then the miser cried, alas, alas, tie me tight, tie me tight. The good servant took his fiddle and started to play. At the first sound, all began to wag their heads. The judge, his clerk, the jailer, the hangman, and everyone who had come to see the hanging. At the second scrape, they all lifted their legs and the hangman let go of his hold of the servant that he might get ready to dance. At the third scrape, they one and all jumped into the air and began to caper madly about with the judge and the miser at the head. Soon everyone, old and young, fat and lean, was dancing as hard as he could. Even the dogs stood up on their hind legs and danced about with the rest. The longer the fiddler played, the higher they jumped, until the last judge, quite out of breath, cried, I give you your life if you will only stop playing. So the servant hung the fiddle around his neck and came down the ladder. He went up to the miser who lay all tired out on the ground and said to him, tell the truth about how I came by that money or I will play again. Then the miser told the judge the whole truth and the judge ordered him to be hung on the gallows in place of the good servant. The End